Today, we are proud to welcome the newly appointed CEO of SIOR Global, my good friend and colleague, Robert Thornburg. In his role as head of SIOR, Robert leads our organization's overall growth, strategic vision, and culture. His highly successful and respected career stems from over 25 years of faithful service to his industry, his clients, and community. Now we've invited Robert to chat with us today to share his extensive knowledge and insight around attracting, mentoring, and retaining top sales teams in today's rapidly evolving world. Robert has recruited and managed countless sales teams. His success has largely been driven by his relentless pursuit of positivity, an emphasis on innovation, and passion to help others achieve their goals. Robert, congrats on your new role, and we are honored to have you here. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I'm going to have to send you a check for setting up the way you did, but uh, greatly appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Now, Robert, now more than ever, we are living in a time where we've always done it that way approach. It just doesn't cut it. Our real estate is constantly evolving. It's a complex industry where being a successful broker requires confidence, hard work, and a desire to continually learn. Now, what are some of your tips for finding top professionals who are passionate and have the grit to succeed in the business? Starting with the easy question, I see. Um, let, uh, let's start off by just acknowledging, I, th I think it's healthy to admit that recruiting might be one of the most difficult aspects of our business, at least from my perspective. And yet there's this oddity in all of it, um, that there really are no secrets when it comes to success. The funny thing is we all know what it looks like. Um, and this comment really isn't meant to be critical, so I want to couch it appropriately. It's just that some companies are, in my view, more willing to dedicate time, thought, and resources to it than others because it's hard. Um, much of this, in my view, is your brand and position in the marketplace. Recruiting done the right way requires things that we're all familiar with. It's building trust. It's nurturing relationships. It's actually communicating uh, what I would call a consistent message that resonates with your target audience. And by the way, somehow doing that all with an element of style and pro uh, professionalism, if you care about your reputation. Um, I'm going to get myself in a little bit of trouble here, but that's okay. Uh, you said you weren't recording this. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Here's the reality. I don't think that recruiting is leaving voicemails at your competitor's office or speaking ill about another firm. Um, any smart broker that's worth their weight in salt that you're going to be going after already understands the landscape. So your job is actually to build a culture that has a buzz around it, um, to develop something that's truly unique and distinct that captures their attention. You know, Jason, the neat thing about our business is you and I have friends that work for a variety of different firms for a variety of different reasons. And that's great because people are out there looking for that best fit for them. Uh, and I just think there's real opportunity in this if you're paying attention. So I, I guess I would just finish by saying in my experience over the years, it always starts out by asking the bigger question, which is, um, what is it that you're actually trying to accomplish? You have to know where you want to go. Uh, you have to build that intelligent strategic plan uh, with the relevant tactical elements to support it. And then you have to most importantly commit to it long term. Yeah, exceptional. All right. Any mistakes that we can learn from that you might have seen in the industry uh, when it comes to attracting talent and growing a business? Certainly, uh, two things will come to mind. Uh, the first isn't particularly insightful, but it's honest. Uh, don't grow just for the sake of growth. Uh, and having conversations like this, uh, I think, you know, over the years, it's interesting because I know a number of exceptional companies with one office that are doing best in class work in their local markets. Um, you need to be mindful that bigger may not be better. Um, do the research, figure out what's really best for you and your company. And then second, uh, I think we often forget that we are actually in the customer service business. We talk about real estate, but is the customer ultimately that drives us? Remember that the quality of your company uh, is actually driven by the quality and the professionalism of your people. And what I found is, and it's a natural byproduct of the work, you're driving recruiting and growth, and it's exciting, but you're going to be faced with tough decisions. And sometimes they look like this. Certain professionals might bring significant revenue to the table, but they can also be a miss in terms of it being a match for your culture. Um, if it doesn't feel like a fit and the right fit early on, trust me from firsthand experience, time won't fix it. Uh, and you make that mistake and actually have lasting uh, negative consequences. I like to say, trust your instinct. Uh, it'll never turn you wrong in terms of the direction that you're taking. So this occupation allows for an incredible amount of flexibility, but uh, it also has uh, an incredible amount of dedication to our clients uh, to piggyback on what you just said. 
you know, it's not a nine to five job. It's a 24 seven one. You know, the most successful salespeople are usually the ones who I see first in the morning and last in the evening. You know, the ones that continue to better themselves and that are never satisfied. You know, when we close a deal, it's great, but you know, we're out of job. Uh, so we're always on the hunt for, you know, for new ones. Um, now you wrote in your blog, um, there is a period of massive change occurring in the real estate industry. Technological advances are altering how we communicate, share data, and market properties. Now, staying in front of these trends requires a mindset of continual improvement. How do you mentor sales teams and put them on a continued learning path? Yeah, interestingly, uh, so some of this actually will go back to uh, the recruiting discussion that we just had. So you hope first and foremost, if you've actually built a culture and a team that realizes the importance of continuing education, or as I tend to refer to it, the importance of reinvention because of the change that's occurring all around us, the world that we live in and the clients that we work for really demand it. Uh, and so maybe this is a good point to pause, Jason, because uh, if you have someone on your team presently that doesn't fit that, that doesn't understand the importance of it, you might need to take a closer look. I certainly believe in second chances, but uh, you know, again, back to that culture conversation about the quality of the people. Uh, I would say regardless of the size of the company or the number of service lines, the challenge right, is always driving new, relevant, and timely information. Um, not an easy discussion because you have uh, the young professional that's going to be interested in different content than say that 25-year-old industry veteran. What I've found is if you get the content and the quality of the presenter right, interest and engagement is always going to follow. Um, saying it differently, make it smart, but make it fun. Um, the great thing about today is there's no shortage of information and options available to build out. Uh, I'm going to describe as a thematic smart program throughout the year that meets everyone's distinct needs. Um, listen, I know I'm the one being interviewed. I don't want to flip it back to you here, but I guess I'm going to do that. So you're part of a company that has this rich history uh, what do you think I might have missed that we could potentially engage on for our audience's benefit? Well, you and I both agree that you can't say enough about development and character and being an expert in your field. Words like commitment, knowledge, and integrity, they should have purpose. Uh, we educating salesperson coming into the company on basic principles and fundamentals of commercial real estate, uh, how to network, uh, build a relationship, and keep it. You know, basic elements are sometimes misunderstood, you know, such as uh, software programs, LOIs, agreements, learning about your own company, how to do property valuations, cash flow uh, models. Um, uh, 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 we push for collaboration, uh, and, you know, particularly with vendors, municipalities, attorneys, developers, asset managers, and their mm -hmm. own colleagues. You know, there's an importance to getting out there and building relationships. Uh, now you talked about the importance of building a network, and that needs to resonate because you once said, if the people in your circle don't challenge and inspire you, that same circle could end up becoming a cage, and that's exceptional guidance. I uh, agree. Right. So you've hired a sales team and created mentoring, uh, learning opportunities for them. How do brokers now go out and market themselves? Yeah, my favorite topic. So it uh, it really is amazing how much has changed just in the last few years. This area that I refer to as kind of the all-in marketing and public relations or communication umbrella, that external messaging piece, um, that machine really runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which is crazy when you think about it. The, um, the speed and the amount of content that's coming at us has changed our landscape forever. Um, my challenge to any broker today is you need to figure out how to cast a larger shadow than your competitors not an easy thing to do, given the information that I just gave. Um, success for me requires a smart, high-level year-round communication plan. And I'm going to say a plan that um, essentially includes email, social media, video, elements of print. Yes, print, in fact, isn't dead. And then, of course, uh, telephone and those in-person outreach when we can finally get back to, to that again. Um, you were alluding to this earlier. I'm going to say it's slightly different. Um, the way that I describe it is commercial real estate isn't a casual profession. And so your marketing can't be either. Um, I have a couple of ideas uh, for people to think about that are simple, but I find them to be often overlooked. First is, um, what do you actually think is the first thing that a decision maker will do before calling or considering using your services? 
The answer is to look you up online, or as we call it, Googling you, right? So I think take an honest look at your current profile and ask yourself, was it easy to find you? When I say profile, I'm not talking your bio that rests on your website. I'm talking about the collective information that that person would find on you when they look you up. Is it compelling? And if it isn't, you need to start making changes to it quickly. Second, as simplistic as, as this might be, quality over quantity should drive everything that you're doing in this particular space. I always think about it as um, the root of this is providing valuable insight anyone can quote average lease rates or purchase price or rather sale prices you need to be smarter more thoughtful in terms of the approach you can't use the shotgun attitude it's only going to hurt your brand uh, and i see it time and time again that rush to get something out as opposed to slowing down and making sure that again will resonate with your audience and third i think it's just also healthy to remember there needs to be a balance in all of this it's expensive it takes time um, we're also a relationship business, which is so important. And I'm always surprised how this never really comes up when we talk about external communications. Um, the importance of engaging face-to-face -face can't be overlooked. And I understand in this COVID era, that's become incredibly challenging. But I think what it does is it underscores the importance. You can't stop. Keep using phones. Continue to use Zoom. Stay visible in a way that an email or a postcard won't do. And hopefully, you're soon we'll be back to those personal face-to-face -face interactions. So... You touched on social media. You know, let's continue that thought for a moment. At times, that world can be ominous in terms of self-promotion. Yeah. What guidance would you offer for someone that is either just getting started or in the early stages of using social media in their business? Yeah, ominous is exactly the word. And, and uh, uh, listen, there has to be a recognition whatever your fear may be about stepping in, this isn't going away. And that's been well stated and documented. The last numbers that I think I saw reported on LinkedIn is that they're capturing a new user every two seconds. Um, they're up to 660 million LinkedIn accounts today. Instagram, which has only been around since 2010, they have over 1 billion active monthly users. Think about that. So the way that I talk about this is there's a whole new group of decision makers that are looking at this in ways that we really have never seen before. And I'm not going to give up our ages, Jason, but I mean, this is transforming quickly. Um, the, the best recommendation I give is irrespective of your age or sophistication, uh, the worst action is actually no action. And your biggest problem in the context of social media is being irrelevant or worse, completely invisible. So um, some certainty. Um, all these platforms are designed to be user friendly. Um, the hardest decision, I think, is just making the commitment to stepping forward. You're going to find that it's not as ominous or frightening as you might think, although I've been in that seat first getting started, and I can understand why people think about that. Jason, I'm going to flip it back to you again, and I suppose you'll, uh, you know, you, you'll charge me later, but you and I engage on social media. So I'm just curious, um, maybe this is good dialogue for our audience, but what's worked for you from a broker perspective? So... So, so I have no doubt that uh, this can be a daunting area for most. Uh, a good mix of education, less promotion, and engaging content is, uh, is always a good formula. Uh, social media allows you that it does it, uh, to have a voice, you know, share your content and engage with your peers. Uh, organizations such as CBRE have done a phenomenal job at this. If you haven't heard their podcast, you should. It's informative, entertaining. Um, you know, but all the advancements in technologies are incredibly helpful. But as you said, it will never replace a personal relationship. Yeah, I might add, and those are all great comments. It's interesting because if you really wanted to find what social media is, it's not a static ad or a listing that you place on LinkedIn. Um, it's really when you get good at it, and maybe this is that part of that intermediate or advanced conversation, it becomes a dialogue. It just happens to live online or in that virtual world. And uh, um, now that we're talking about this, I think one extra important point as you evolve is it's getting really good at understanding what your voice is. I know that word um, authenticity gets thrown around a lot, but that's everything here. Um, and I would just say that as you immerse into it and you get more comfortable, you'll be more um, confident and familiar using your own voice because that's going to be um, the content that resonates again with your target audience. So food for thought. So you've been involved with various organizations like SIOR, CCIM, and others. Do you see these having an increasing or decreasing significance for commercial real estate professionals in the years ahead, and why? I'd have to say the honest answer is going to be both. Uh, I always love the, uh, the quote from Rich Dad, Poor Dad author, um, Robert Kiyosaki, where uh, he talked about the richest people in the world uh, look for and build networks. Everyone else looks for work. Um, of course, what he was actually referring to is high-level networks. And so I would say without question, 
forward-thinking organizations like SIOR, um, as an example, are going to always challenge and prevailing methods, and they're going to drive industry-leading content. And that's why they're going to continue to thrive in the years ahead. It's really interesting because they carry this lasting impact in our knowledge, business, and even our friendships, which is something you don't expect. And it's really, uh, in my uh, opinion, nearly impossible to replicate anywhere else. So we've also talked about how the industry is changing so quickly. You know, one of the key elements of the change is how much data is now available to help uh, commercial real estate decisions. Uh, the COVID pandemic has also accelerated the use of, and the need for prop tech. Now, how could tomorrow a successful broker keep pace with all these changes that's evolving at the speed of light these days? Big conversation. I wish we had more time to, to delve into this. Uh, actually, someone asked me the other day what it is that scared me the most or kept me up at night was actually his question in terms of commercial real estate. This is it. Um, as I say often, it's not change itself. It's actually how fast that rate of change is occurring all around us on a daily basis. In fact, I, I had an interesting discussion last week with someone who's uh, pretty experienced in prop tech, and we were talking about the amount of data um, that we're capturing on the building side, inside structures. Um, this individual was specific to office, but he was, uh, I'm going to try not to screw this up. Uh, so if he sees this and I've misquoted him, I have to send him an apology, but he was talking about how his group had identified Oh, over 300 relevant metrics that could essentially be used to drive a new rating system uh, and how this impacts is really how future tenants will compare competing properties, safety, security, efficiency. Uh, this is just one example of a series of, of um, really significant changes that are coming at us. Um, related to this discussion of change, um, I love that comment by Bill, quotes, uh, Bill Gates rather, that he quoted a couple of years ago, and he talked about... Um, change that's occurring in the next 10 years is going to be nothing unlike what we'd seen in the prior 50. So the entire topic, I guess, about change is exciting, but it's also overwhelming. Um, and just to be clear, I want to get back to your question. I don't think that as real estate professionals, we need to understand how to design systems or come up with that next best app. We do, however, really need to pay close attention to this and what's occurring around us. And I guess I've always felt the best way to do that is to surround yourself with people that are smarter and better at it than you are. Stay connected to an environment where education and networking um, circle around these types of topics. You have to be more than a, a casual observer is how we describe it. And uh, it pains me to say those who take kind of a passive attitude uh, attitudes towards this are going to see the industry pass them by in the next three to five years. So what advice would you give young brokers coming into the commercial real estate industry? I love this question. Uh, listen, I was very fortunate. I count my blessings. Uh, early on in my career, I had a few incredible leaders who um, were the perfect example of what professionalism and excellence look like. And so what this really did is it gave me uh, a firsthand example of how the industry's best, the elite, um, can still truly reflect things like kindness, collaboration. Um, they embodied integrity, um, true expertise. But the interesting thing about what they did is they performed that work with confidence not arrogance. And from my perspective, those are two very, very different things. So the best advice that I can give is model the right behavior. All you have is your reputation. And I can certainly tell you it's not something that you want to lose. You're right. Take a sense of pride in what you do. And uh, uh, you were once quoted as saying, increase your own standard. Uh, uh, another, another great quote from you. One more question before you go. Sure. So let's talk about Tommy. Tom McCormick has been a pillar in our organization for what seems to be, well, what seems to be several lifetimes. He was honored with the Howell Watson Distinguished Service Award and his depth of knowledge, collaboration and mentorship demonstrate what an SIOR ought to be, not to mention his athletic prowess. Now you now sit at the same desk he sat at and similar to the Resolute desk in the White House, it has been overheard that Tommy left the secret to how his two inch vertical on the volleyball court played such a pivotal role for so many years in his team's extensive winning streak at all those SIOR conferences. Now, is there any truth to this? Uh, listen, I think the best thing I can state here is no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's a good egg. And we uh, amazing. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the truth of all that is uh, big shoes to fill, no question. And his dedication to this organization is uh, it's really been nothing less than extraordinary. So uh, I just can't speak to the uh, the vertical. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, congratulations again, Robert. Appreciate that. And thank you very much for spending some time with us. It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you again.